perfect. Yo, what is up my bots? I know, I know, over a month with no upload. But seriously, I promise you it was for good reasoning. The project we are showcasing in today's video took way longer than I anticipated. You guys already know, I'm not out here trying to post clickbait garbage content like all those other whack YouTubers you follow. I truly try my best to put out content you legit can't find anywhere else. Your boy's always trying to push the limits and innovate within the gaming scene. In today's video is no exception. The controller in today's video is truly what I believe to be an industry changer. And I accomplish this by packing a much needed update within that extremely outdated controller tech. If you're a regular on my channel, you'll know I've recently made the switch from controller to keyboard and mouse. I was hesitant, just like a lot of you are, as the switch to KBM can be difficult to get the hang of and seemed almost impossible to master. But with persistence, I finally got the hang of it. And now the funny thing is, going back to controller seems almost impossible. I always consider myself as someone who was pretty decent at competitive gaming and was very good at things like aiming and being accurate on a controller. Now going back to that same controller after being a KBM player consistently for four to five months, I find it almost impossible to be accurate with a traditional analog stick. We have taken the best aspects from controller and merged them with an optical mouse sensor instead of a traditional right analog stick. So let's just jump right into it. First and most importantly, let's start off with how we created the mouse used on this controller. This was obviously one of our biggest challenges. When using a mouse in a traditional desktop setup, you have a large, flat, level surface to interact with. This desktop real estate is obviously not available on a controller, so we need to approach this problem from two major angles. First, we need to shrink the overall size of the mouse dramatically to around just the size of your thumb. As a mouse is designed to fit the palm of your hand comfortably, we can immediately eliminate the bulk of the mouse as much of its build is just pretty plastic in RGB lighting. We can also eliminate things like the buttons in the scroll wheels. Theoretically, all we need to harvest and maintain was the optical sensor within the mouse. The optical sensor is that red laser that shoots out from the bottom. The optical sensor sensor reads the direction the mouse is being moved to and from. This was hands down the most challenging part of this project. Our objective was to find a mouse PCB aka the mouse's main board, in which the optical sensor took up very minimal space, was in a close vicinity to the USB cable that plugged into the computer and had the wiring layout far enough from the other buttons on the board. Reason being is so we could physically cut the board out using a Dremel and harvest the optical sensor in USB connection on a slimmed down modified board, removing those unnecessary components we won't be using. After purchasing and Disassembling 10 plus mice from all different brands, I quickly discovered each mouse manufacturer uses a different layout for their optical sensor on the PCB. This was an extremely expensive task, but it did result in finding the perfect mouse PCB I needed for this project. The second challenge we faced was creating a sufficient amount of space on the front of the controller that can emulate a full-sized mouse pad while reducing the size of the overall mouse from the the size of your hand down to just the size of your thumb helped tremendously, I still needed quite a bit of room for those large mouse movements required while gaming. 
So we needed to remove and reallocate every single face button on the controller to either the back side or the edges of the controller. Taking inspiration from the pro controller scene, we decided to place the A and B buttons on the back side of the controller, which could easily be reached with your middle or ring finger and the X and Y buttons to the top side of the controller right beside the triggers. Not only did we reallocate the four major face buttons, we replaced them with mechanical gaming keyboard switches. These switches put the paddles on controllers like the scuff to shame. We then replaced the traditional plus sign d-pad with four smaller tack switches and placed those much closer to the edge of the controller where they were still accessible by your thumb. And last but not least, we removed the right analog stick entirely as this is being replaced with the mouse's optical sensor. So with all the face buttons removed, this left us with around a four inch by four inch space. Last, but certainly not least, when trying to emulate a mouse experience on a controller as closely to using a mouse on a desktop, we needed a way to be able to lift and quickly place back down our new thumb size mouse. When gaming with a mouse on a traditional desktop setup, you are constantly lifting the mouse off the mouse pad by gripping it with your fingers when you get to the edge of your mouse pad or making rapid movements. So we needed to add some type of strapping that would not only keep the thumb mouse attached to your thumb when you needed to lift it, but we also needed the strapping to keep the mouse aligned in the proper position so the optical sensor would stay in its up, down, left, right positioning. We ended up using a silicone silicon type band for the strapping. Not only did this grip the thumb well, but it was flexible, which made it extremely comfortable when bending my thumb. While aim assist can and does work in many games, it still doesn't even come close to a mouse. And I think why so many people are complaining about aim assist, especially in the Fortnite scene, is now more than ever, cross-platform is a thing. More and more PC gamers are playing against console gamers. And this problem obviously wasn't a thing 10 years ago. Cross-platform is great for game developers as it allows more people to access and play their games. But as competitive Competitive games get more and more advanced and controllers continue to stay the same using a traditional analog stick input, the aim assist controversy will only continue to get worse as it's the only way for controller players to have a fighting chance. This is where the idea for the mouse controller came to me. You may be asking, how does this controller even work? Again, referencing back to one of our older videos, we demonstrated how you can make your computer read your mouse as a controller, in turn, giving you things like aim assist on KBM. How we accomplished this was by using something called remapping software. The remapping software we used is called ReWASD. ReWASD is an amazing program. It allows you to remap any button on a controller to any key on a keyboard or vice versa. With the mouse controller, we mapped all the buttons of the controller to specific keys on the keyboard. So when playing a game, it sees it as if you are just on a normal keyboard and mouse. Example, we remap things like the left analog stick to WASD and RT and LT to right and left click and it works flawlessly. But you can also use the mouse controller as a standard controller and not remap it to KBM inputs. By using the method we used in the aim assist mouse video, you can just as easily remap the thumb mouse to right stick and you can have the very controversial OP aim assist on a mouse. It's seriously unfair. I have to mention this because I know there'll be a ton of people in the comment section complaining, oh, this type of controller has been done before. While the idea of a mouse type controller has been attempted in the past, it didn't gain much success in the gaming scene. In 2015, Valve approached this idea in a much different direction. Instead of using an optical sensor like we have done, they decided to use a touchpad. Yes, a touchpad. That horrible thing you use on your laptop. By using a touchpad, it eliminated a lot of the problems we encountered with our controller. It took up a lot less space and it was stationary, meaning no moving parts. The problem with a touchpad, as I'm sure you're well aware if you have ever used one, was it can be extremely difficult to control, much less be accurate with. 
When it comes to mouse inputs, optical sensors are like Kylie Jenner and touchpads are like Caitlyn Jenner. Imagine playing COD or Fortnite on your laptop using the touchpad. Needless to say, they were definitely headed in the right direction, but fell drastically short. So that's it for today's video, guys. I know what you're thinking. I want this thing. So you know the drill. Giveaway time. With a... <clears throat> but you need to earn it. Leave a comment below for a new idea for a custom controller or some ideas to something you may add or remove from the mouse controller we just showcased. You never know, I may even make a video on it. I'll announce the winners in a few weeks. I appreciate you loyal mofos for coming back for each video even when I don't post that often. I hope for the short 10 to 15 minutes that you're on my channel you truly witness something that you've never seen before, or even better, stimulate your very own creativity. This mouse controller took way longer than we planned. That's why the video is so delayed, but I'm super happy with how it turned out. You can call me crazy, but I truly think this controller is an industry changer. Traditional analog sticks on a standard controller need a major update, and this could be an entry point. Anyways, I love you bots so much. If you're new to the channel and you like what you just saw, subscribe because we got a whole lot of crazy projects just like this coming very soon. Also, if you're feeling extra generous, slap a like on the video. It helps me out more than you know, brother. Aight then, lady of bots. Perfect, perfect.